When I get really mad, I just look at this picture and see a smile on Mason's face holding up the belt. Well, I'm going to wipe that smile off his face and take away that belt, because that belt's mine. Fresh from an Olympic triumph that saw him capture gold for his adopted nation of Canada, Lennox, the Lion Lewis, quickly became a hot prospect on the pro scene, but back in the country he called home, England. Resistance, and there's a lot of it. Uh, Fortune is caught here and in terrible trouble, and it stopped. Oh, it stopped. Yeah, I would say I've got a big ego. I've really got a big ego. You know, I hate, I hate to lose. From the off, Lennox looked like the real deal, blasting out all area-level competitors with ease, impressing the boxing landscape with his well-rounded fundamentals, piston-like jab, and devastating straight right hand. They will nullify... Oh, look at right. Right. Tucker, first time in his career! If a talent like Lennox had come around in the previous three decades, you could have bet your house on him becoming the best thing Britain had produced since, I don't know, perhaps Bob Fitzsimmons? Which is going back a while, to put it mildly. Only, at the exact moment he turned pro, the current crop of British heavyweights was by far the best the nation had ever produced. Frank Bruno, Herbie Hyde, Henry Akinwande, and Lennox's first big test, Gary Mason, were all making waves at various levels of the sport, so even becoming a British champion was far from a formality, despite his glaring talent, as the man who held the belt boasted an outstanding record of 35-0 with 33 KOs. Because while I was an active Lennox Lewis, every time he was on the television, he was jumping up, oh, I want Gary Mason, he's got something I want. Well, Lennox, let me tell you something, I've got something I want to give you. Oh, what a right hand punch that was. Flush on the chin there. I doubt whether he'll get over this round, although he's running out of time. The right hand punch really did it. Gary Mason learned his trade in the shadow of Britain's darling, Frank Bruno. They even fought in a similar style, aggressive on the slower side, but made up for it with their crushing power. Mason was very active, fighting between six to seven times a year. He fought most of the same journeyman Tyson did on his rise to the title. In fact, I would bet he has the most in common opponents with Tyson than any other boxer in history. I counted 10 on his box rack alone. And my intention is to make Lennox Lewis pay for a lot of the things that he's been saying about me while I was inactive. Mason built up a large record before he really established himself on the world stage. He did beat a few decent fighters like Bigfoot Martin, Terrell Biggs, and James Quick Tillis, but never seemed to want to move on from his dominant position as the British champion. Well, surely it's Gary Mason, and then all the doubts go away then. That's what I want. I want Gary Mason. Lennox was a fine prospect, but Mason was the vastly more experienced fighter, which led to the bookmakers making the defending champion the betting favorite as the two were scheduled to battle it out in March 1991. BLTV picks up the action from well, round very much at stake. Lewis well covered up with his arms in close as Mason tries to find his body. And again, that's a beautiful right up about from Lewis as Mason advanced. That's a bit of right hand from Mason, and that gave Lennox Lewis something to think about. Mason imposed his strength on Lewis early, backing up the younger man for the first time in his career. The last fight of Cooper's career. beginning to close. Lack of experience as a pro is certainly fighting coolly enough here, but he's hurt again by right hand, but comes instantly back. Mason needs a KO blow here. A better round for Mason. Mason was arguably ahead on the cards after five or so rounds, but a previous eye injury came back to haunt him in a big way. Thereafter, Lennox began to disguise his left, piecing the champion apart over the next six minutes. Becoming quite a brutal fight. And 
again, he's picked off with... I don't know how long his courage can sustain him here. He's taking too much and he's badly hurt. He screwed his face up in pain and I really do think this is going to have to be brought to an end in a minute. But Mason is having one last desperate go in round seven. And it's called off. That was the last fling for Gary Mason. Given the circumstances, it was an understandable stoppage that Mason himself took very well. However, you have to give him all the credit in the world for producing such a courageous rally right to the bitter end. I have to give enough respect to Gary Mason. You know, he's really good. And uh, I, t I said to the reporters before this fight, as soon as he feels me hitting him in his eye, he's going to think about it and it's going to affect him mentally. And wh what he tried to do was try and get me out of there as soon as possible because he felt that his eye was going to go. Lennox was right, but the truth is, Mason should have never been allowed to partake in the fight to begin with. Mason suffered a detached retina one fight before his showdown with Lennox, and it was a serious one that required serious surgery. He was forced to retire after the Lennox fight due to his injury. He eventually returned for two more bouts three years later, but once again his slightly damaged eye became a problem, and he hung him up for good in 1994 with a record of 37 wins and one loss. Yes, it was very serious. A, a detached retina to anybody serious because I'm sure everybody values their sight. And like I, of course, value my sight. Mason provided Lennox with one of the toughest fights he would have in his entire career, particularly in the fights he won. The bout really served its purpose as a great test and learning outing for the man who would go on to be Britain's best ever 200 plus pounder and one of the finest heavyweight champions across the entire history of the sport. Lennox Lewis is the best. I laid them all to rest. Mason sadly passed away after a terrible automobile collision in 2011. By all accounts, he was a great man, nicknamed the Gentle Giant right up to his unfortunate passing. He did a lot for children's hospices, he did a lot for children's hospitals, and he did a lot for underprivileged children in the main. But what I can tell you about Gary is that not only was a big man, he had the biggest heart ever. Over a thousand people attended Mason's funeral, a man that will be sorely missed. Rest in peace.